If you thought China's construction boom had already peaked, think again, it hasn't slowed down. In fact, some of the nation's most ambitious megaprojects are finally crossing the finish line in 2025. We're talking about canals cut straight through mountains, trains racing beneath rivers, and high-altitude railways stretching across some of the most dangerous terrain on Earth. Some of these projects have been in development for over a decade, while others were launched just five years ago. But now, as China enters the final stretch of its current five-year plan, deadlines are closing in and the pressure to deliver is greater than ever. These aren't just local infrastructure upgrades, they're designed to reshape trade routes, influence global markets, and tighten China's grip over strategic regions across Asia. The scale is staggering. Thousands of kilometers of new railway, water tunnels wide enough for cargo ships, and massive power stations capable of storing more electricity than entire nations consume. So what exactly is getting completed in 2025? And more importantly, what does it mean for China and for the rest of the world? To answer that, you need to zoom out. 2025 isn't just another year on the calendar, it's the final year of China's 14th five-year plan, a state-led roadmap that's guided everything from energy policy to mega-project construction since 2021. These five-year plans are how Beijing sets national priorities and ensures they actually get built. The current plan has focused on three key goals, strengthening domestic supply chains, expanding renewable energy, and building massive infrastructure networks to connect China's inland regions with global markets. The scale of investment behind this push is almost unimaginable. Since 2021, China has poured more than $1.3 trillion into infrastructure. At its core, this is about solving multiple challenges at once how to move goods faster without over-reliance on coastal ports like Shanghai, how to store renewable energy when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing, and how to maintain control over sensitive frontier regions like Tibet and Xinjiang while unlocking their economic potential. And now, in this final year, all of those efforts are coming together. Projects that seemed impossible on paper are now nearly complete, ready to transform both China's economy and its global influence. To understand the full picture, let's start with one project that's quietly changing the trade routes of southern China, a massive canal built almost entirely by hand that's finally ready to open in 2025. Pinglu Canal In Guangxi Province, one of China's most ambitious transport projects is now entering its final phase, the Pinglu Canal. Scheduled to open in late 2025, it will be the first major canal China has built since the Sui Dynasty more than a thousand years ago. But this is no simple irrigation ditch. The Pinglu Canal is being engineered to handle massive 5,000-ton cargo ships with a total construction budget of around $10 billion. Work officially began in August 2022 with one clear mission to connect the Xiang River system, flowing through resource-rich inland provinces like Guizhou and Yunnan, directly to the Beibu Gulf, which opens into the South China Sea. In practical terms, this means creating a shipping shortcut for inland cargo that currently has to be hauled hundreds of kilometers by truck or rail just to reach a major port. Provinces like Yunnan and Guizhou are key producers of coal, bauxite, cement, and agricultural goods. But transporting those resources has long been bottlenecked by higher-cost land routes. The Pinglu Canal is designed to change that, turning China's inland rivers into a high-capacity water highway. Once fully operational, the canal is expected to move up to 100 million tons of cargo every year, making it one of the highest-capacity inland waterways in the country. That's a game-changer for bulk commodities like grain, coal, and construction materials flowing from inland factories straight to global markets. From an engineering perspective, the project is breathtaking. The 134-kilometer route cuts across multiple elevation zones, requiring the construction of three enormous ship locks to lift and lower vessels. These locks rank among the largest in the world in both lift height and width. But what makes the Pinglu Canal stand out even more is how it's being built. Instead of relying entirely on tunnel boring machines and heavy automation, the project has leaned heavily on manual labor. Tens of thousands of workers have been digging, dredging, and shifting earth day and night, making it one of the largest earth-moving efforts underway anywhere on the planet. 
At its peak, more than 35,000 workers were on site. So far, over 340 million cubic meters of rock and soil have been excavated, while bridges, culverts, and control systems rise in parallel. Today, more than 80% of the structural work is complete, with the next phase focusing on lock installation, dredging, and trial operations. If construction stays on schedule, the Ping Lu Canal will be fully operational by the end of 2025, opening a brand new economic artery deep inside China and reducing dependence on vulnerable coastal choke points. For Beijing, that means shifting the center of trade inland, exactly in line with its long-term strategy. And just across the Pearl River Delta, China is racing to finish another project. This one doesn't move carlo ships across mountains, it moves high-speed trains under the water. Shenzhen Jiangmen High-Speed Railway If you look at a map of southern China, you'll notice something unusual. Two major cities, Shenzhen and Jiangmen, are barely 100 kilometers apart. Yet until now, there has been no direct high-speed rail line linking them. Traveling between the two has always taken longer than it should. That's about to change. Instead of building a bridge, China is pushing the limits of engineering by tunneling directly beneath the Pearl River estuary, one of the busiest and most challenging waterways in the region. This is the Shenzhen Jiangmen High Speed Railway, a project that proves size isn't the only measure of difficulty. At just 116 kilometers in length, it may not sound like a mega project, but the complexity is staggering. Construction began in 2020, and the line cuts under the Pearl River using one of the world's largest slurry shield tunnel boring machines built specifically for this task. Engineers have had to contend with shifting sediments, high water pressure, and unstable geology, all while carving a stable path deep below the riverbed. The centerpiece of the project is the Shiziyang Tunnel, a 13-kilometer-long submarine tunnel that stands as one of China's longest and widest undersea rail tunnels. It's being designed for trains traveling at 350 kilometers per hour, turning what used to be a slow journey into a lightning-fast connection. When completed, the new line will slash travel time between Shenzhen and Jiangmen to just 30 minutes. But the project isn't only about passenger convenience. It's part of a grander vision, the integration of the Greater Bay Area. This massive urban cluster of 11 cities, including Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Hong Kong, and Macau, is home to over 86 million people and generates around $2 trillion in GDP every year. By plugging directly into China's national high-speed rail grid, the Shenzhen Zhongman Line will strengthen east-west mobility across Guangdong province, speeding up not just commutes, but also the flow of goods from factories, warehouses, and ports. As of now, tunneling has been completed, and more than half the track has already been laid. The next steps are system integration, power, ventilation, safety monitoring, and high-speed signaling. Testing is expected to begin in the third quarter of this year. With an estimated cost of $5.6 to $6 billion, it's one of the most expensive high-speed rail projects in Guangdong on a per-kilometer basis, largely because of its ambitious undersea segment. This project may not make global headlines like China's record-breaking bridges or skyscrapers, but for the Greater Bay Area, it's transformative. By linking two fast-growing cities directly, the railway strengthens the economic heart of southern China. And while it's powered by electricity, China's next mega-project takes things even further. A colossal power station designed to store more energy than entire countries produce. Luxi Pump Storage Batteries aren't just for phones and electric cars. In 2025, China is finishing a battery so massive that it can stabilize entire cities, but it doesn't look anything like the batteries we're used to. This is the Luxi Pumped Storage Power Station located in Hunan Province, and when complete, it will be able to store and release up to 3.6 gigawatts of power. For perspective, that's more peak output than the Hoover Dam, not continuously, but in short, powerful bursts at the exact moments it matters most. So how does it work? Unlike a typical hydroelectric dam, pump storage doesn't rely on the natural flow of rivers. Instead, it's essentially a giant water-powered battery. 
When there's extra electricity on the grid, especially from solar panels at midday or wind farms during the night, the station uses that surplus to pump water uphill into a high reservoir. Then, when demand spikes, such as during heat waves or the evening peak, the water is released back downhill through massive turbines, instantly generating power. It's water, gravity, and engineering, no lithium, no chemicals, and no supply chain risks. This is a critical piece of China's energy strategy. The country is adding renewables, wind and solar, faster than anyone else in the world. But renewable energy is intermittent. Solar fades at sunset, wind can drop without warning. Without large-scale storage, the grid has to fall back on coal and gas when renewables can't keep up. The Luxi project is designed to solve that. Once operational, it will generate around 6.66 billion kilowatt hours per year, enough to power more than 4.5 million households. The engineering behind it is just as impressive. Built between two massive reservoirs at different elevations, the station relies on underground tunnels that drop more than 400 meters in vertical height. This gives the falling water enough force to spin six reversible turbines located in the lower station. Each turbine can ramp up from idle to full power in under 30 seconds, providing an almost instant response when the grid needs it. Construction began in mid-2021 with a total investment of about $4.8 billion, and it's part of a much larger national effort. China is building dozens of pump storage stations like Luxi, creating a flexible backup network that will stabilize its grid as fossil fuel reliance declines. While flashy solar farms and massive wind turbines grab headlines, it's projects like this, hidden in the hills, that quietly make clean energy reliable. And while the Luxi power station is all about invisible stability, China's next project is the opposite, highly visible, ultra-modern, and built to rival Silicon Valley. Guang Big Data Valley When most people think of major tech hubs, they picture sprawling coastal cities, Shanghai, Shenzhen, or Beijing. But in China, the next big leap in digital infrastructure is happening in a place that might surprise you. Deep in the mountains of Guizhou province, a region traditionally known for farming, mining, and karst landscapes, a massive high-tech zone is nearing completion. It's called the Guang Big Data Valley, and by the end of 2025, it's expected to stand as one of China's largest centers for cloud computing, artificial intelligence training, and big data storage. The project has been in the making for nearly a decade. Construction of the core data cluster began in 2015, but the pace accelerated dramatically after 2020, when Beijing folded it into its Digital China Initiative, a sweeping plan to expand the nation's technological backbone. So why place such a futuristic project in an interior province rather than a coastal megacity? The reasoning comes down to three simple but critical factors, power, land, and climate. Guang is cooler than most of China's coastal provinces, which means the energy costs of cooling vast server halls are far lower. The province also has access to abundant hydropower, providing a renewable and stable energy source to feed power-hungry data centers while helping meet strict national efficiency targets. And perhaps most importantly, land here is cheap, far cheaper than in Shenzhen or Shanghai making large-scale expansion feasible without the astronomical costs of coastal real estate. Today, Guang Big Data Valley is no longer just a local experiment. Some of China's biggest tech giants, Alibaba Cloud, Tencent, Huawei, and China Telecom, have already built massive facilities here. Together, these centers are building out capacity for more than 4 million servers, powering everything from e-commerce platforms and video streaming to AI voice recognition, financial transactions, and next-generation computing models. So far, over $7 billion in public and private investment has been poured into the project. Much of this funding has gone towards strengthening power supplies, laying down high-speed fiber optic networks, and building advanced redundancy systems to ensure the near-mythical standard of 99.999% uptime. But Guang isn't just about meeting commercial demand. Beijing has also selected it as a national pilot zone for digital governance. That means it's a testing ground for state-driven systems like smart city management platforms, AI-powered traffic control, blockchain-based government records, and integrated surveillance networks. 
what works here, can be scaled up across China's other cities. In 2025, the Valley will take another major step forward. A national-level AI model training center is scheduled to go live, alongside China's largest edge computing lab. These facilities will push the limits of real-time processing, a crucial capability for technologies like autonomous vehicles, industrial robotics, and large-scale IoT systems. For Guizhou, the transformation is extraordinary. A province once considered far from China's tech map is now on its way to becoming the digital backbone of the nation. And while Guang Big Data Valley is about data, code, and algorithms, China's next project moves from the digital cloud to the very roof of the world, where high-speed rail is meeting altitude, engineering, and geopolitics in the Himalayas. Sichuan Tibet Railway Of all the mega-projects China aims to finish in 2025, none are as extreme as the Sichuan Tibet Railway. This line is designed to connect Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province, with Lhasa, the capital of Tibet, cutting straight through more than 1,900 kilometers of some of the harshest terrain on Earth. The most difficult section, stretching from Ya'an to Ningchi, is expected to be completed by late 2025. That section alone covers over a thousand kilometers of high-altitude landscapes, deep valleys, active fault zones, and unstable slopes at elevations approaching 3,000 meters. More than 90% of the route consists of tunnels and bridges, making it one of the most technically challenging railway projects ever attempted. Among its engineering marvels is the Yigong Tunnel, stretching more than 26 miles through fragile rock layers that have collapsed before. To keep it stable, engineers have installed advanced pressure sensors, reinforced lining systems, and automatic ventilation to handle the thin air at altitude. Construction began in November 2020 with a staggering budget of $44 billion, making it one of the most expensive rail segments in China's history. But the payoff is enormous. Once complete, the line will slash travel time between Tibet and the rest of China, turning what was once a multi-day journey into just 13 hours. That means faster delivery of goods, easier access for tourists, and a more reliable lifeline for emergency supplies. But the railway isn't only about engineering, it's also about geopolitics. The line runs close to Arunachal Pradesh, a region disputed by both China and India. Officially, Beijing frames the project as a development initiative designed to boost economic growth in Tibet. But in New Delhi, analysts see something more, a dual-use corridor that could just as easily move troops, weapons and fuel as it could tourists and cargo. That concern isn't abstract. This region has already seen deadly border clashes, most recently in 2020 in the Galwan Valley, where soldiers fought in brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. By linking to the already operational Lhasa Ningchi line, China will be able to run high-speed trains deep into Tibet. And by 2030, the full Chengdu-Lhasa connection is expected to be finished, creating a continuous high-speed rail link across the Tibetan Plateau. Once complete, it will rank among the highest, most complex, and most geopolitically sensitive railways in the world. Together, projects like the Sichuan-Tibet Railway show what state-driven development looks like when the goal extends beyond economics. For Beijing, 2025 isn't just a deadline, it's a milestone, a year when massive, long-planned projects finally take physical form. And for the rest of the world, the question is unavoidable. If China is building infrastructure at this scale and speed, what is your country doing?